Hi, everyone. And today we're talking about making the transition from being an individual contributor to being a people manager. And joining us for this discussion is emerging actuarial leader, Alex Long. Alex is a senior actuary of the Wealth Protection Valuation Team at Resolution Life Australasia, and he has over 10 years of experience in valuation, pricing strategy, and data analytics across life insurance, wealth management, and banking. Alex spent three and a half years in Hong Kong in his early career, but relocated to Sydney in 2013, which was the same year that he completed his actuarial and CFA exams. Alex has been an active volunteer at both the Actuaries Institute and the CFA Society Sydney, focusing on education development and mentoring. He is also a graduate of the Guardian Actuarial Leadership Program. Alex has a strong desire to develop skills in stakeholder engagement and strategy, and at home, he's expecting a second child later in 2023. Alex, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Julia. <laughs> So I'm really looking forward to hearing some of your stories, reflections and learnings, uh, Alex, as you've made that transition. You've been in a people management role for a little while now mm. and looking forward to hearing what you enjoy about it, what you found challenging about it in this interview. But yeah. I thought, could we start with uh, you telling us a little bit about your career path to date? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, yeah, thanks, Julia, for um, yeah doing this for me. Uh, yeah, so... My journey so far, like, is like I would say, it's not a, like a traditional path, like, uh, in a way. So basically, uh, my back a little bit of my background. I grew up in Hong Kong. I, uh, came to Australia for university and completed my actual program in, um, uh, in Canberra, A and U. Uh, and then after my graduation, I went back to Hong Kong to work. Uh for a few years. I, uh, my first few years of experience was largely in investment and commodity research. So I didn't actually really have a, a traditional actuarial path to start with. And then after a few years, I decided to relocate uh, back to Australia and I reside, now have been residing in Sydney for a decade, or, uh, right over a decade, I guess. Uh, and then, yeah, and and that's actually the start of my actuarial journey. And my really first actuarial role was a valuation role in a uh, retail uh, wealth management function. Uh, uh, sorry, like the uh, the, will, the retail wealth management function of Clearview. So it's the life insurance, but I worked in the retail wealth management function. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I worked in Macquarie for a short period of time and where I gained some experience in banking and wholesale wealth management. And interestingly, like my current role in, at Resolution Life, like it's really my first life insurance traditional mm -hmm. uh, actuarial experience. Mm -hmm. And it's where I have my first taste of life insurance, but also like stepping into a team lead role uh, managing the technical and delivery aspects of the wealth protection book uh, of the company. Mm. What a diverse career that you've had, Alex, working across different practice areas in different countries as well. I'm sure you've learned lots of different things in those different roles. So Yeah, yeah. Journey so far is not necessarily a smooth one, a smooth in a single company one, uh, but uh, I have been enjoying it, yeah. Good, good. I've often noticed that one of the things that really shapes us as leaders and managers is the other managers that we've worked for and the diversity of experience that you've had working in different companies. Mm. Um, you've probably worked for a lot of great leaders over your career. Can you tell mm. us about one of them and what was um, unique or different about their management style? Yeah, sure thing. Um, I think like there are different kinds of like managers like across different companies, like even within the same company, like, like we say that we, like, oh, most companies say that they have a single culture, but actually, like within the culture, there's still different kinds of people that, That's true. like, like in, like, uh, they're in different styles as well. I guess, like, the one that, uh, that I, I probably, uh, very, um, uh, impressed that, like, uh, is that uh, it's actually a quality that I'm still striving to develop is how to become always calm um, and okay. positive and mm -hmm. optimistic about, like, um, the, uh, about the future. I guess the um, being a leader is not just about, uh, okay, I really need to be innovative. I need to be delivering this and that, but it's also about how you actually make other people comfortable. Like 
very often that's like when you are in a leader role, you will be very stressed, like in a, because like there will be like there's a lot to manage from the up, from the senior stakeholders. There could be external stakeholders, that's the regulators and things like that. They actually keep giving you pressures. And on the other hand, you don't necessarily know that like you don't necess necessarily always have the answer. And so being calm at first, like making sure that like you like you can have the logical thinking sorted um always um have the ability to um have to retain the the ability to actually think through the issues and gathering like the pieces that that, that, that are absolutely necessary understand what can what is needed and what is not needed what is good to have what is not good to have uh, i think that is actually very important and one experience that i actually have like from my personal experience is the like when i was with macquarie like uh because of some organizational structural change a really well respected leader actually had to go and it was a shock to everyone that like because like that manager has always been performing uh and everyone like at the working level really loves him and learned a lot from him mm -hmm. uh and it came as a shock and panic to everyone no one know how to knew how to react uh after the news uh uh, came out uh what surprised me like back then was the how how calm that leader actually was like even when he was actually facing a, such a situation and he actually came to every function like to just say hello and have an individual chat with the with the team to uh, say hello and then just have a chat about uh, like the changes that is happening mm -hmm. uh he's he remained really really calm like all the way through and after that i actually spoke to him like more in a more private situation it is not that like he is not unhappy about the situation or he's not he, he's definitely not frustrated or unhappy mm -hmm. about the situation but he showed that the quality as a leader that's like even when something uh averse like really like unpleasant like happening to him like he remains calm and not actually inf letting the negative inf uh, emotion out and influence the people like around him around him and he's always there he's always he gives me the impression that like he is always there to uh motivate people to 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 achieve their individual goals so i guess that is really like a, a style that i i i feel like i personally treasure a lot I, and i see the merit of it mm. uh yeah i guess that is my experience yeah yeah, yeah, that's really interesting, Alex. So that the calmness of that leader, despite being in a very challenging situation, the calmness was a very important quality for him to show great leadership and to to support the team throughout that process, even though mm. it had come as a shock. Mm. And it can be very challenging too when those things happen, especially when there's emotions running high. I know we talk a lot about authentic leadership and sometimes people think authentic leadership means that everybody needs to know exactly how you're feeling, but it's not always the case. Mm. It sounds like he, he was still aligned in the way that he was behaving. He was authentic mm. in the way that he was presenting, but he was presenting uh a more intentional kind of approach and the way he was showing up um, mm. without sort of sharing that uh, frustration and shock that it, or reflecting the frustration yeah. and shock that everyone else Yeah, I, I guess the thing is also that like it doesn't help. Does it help? Like like if it doesn't help, like try to be calm and positive mm. and mm. don't your your like very often we don't notice that that our, our negative emotion actually influence other people in a yeah. really bad way. And but it's like you want to make sure that they feel comfortable. Everyone, I see, as a leader, it's your responsibility to be like to take care of the like the feeling of the team members and making yeah. sure that they don't negatively they don't get negatively uh, influenced in a way. Yeah, 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 mm. definitely. Mm. Okay, that's a really interesting story. Thank you for sharing mm. that with us, Alex. So turning to your own role as a leader now, and you said you're in a team leader role, what mm. do you enjoy most about being an actuary in a management role? Um, it's definitely the transition from being so close to the details to like being able to see picture, the bigger picture, seeing things mm. from a more helicopter view, uh, being able to cover different aspects, making sure that like, uh, 
um, the work that you understanding the fact that like your your piece of work not just impacts this particular function but could potentially impact other functions mm -hmm. and you have to manage that relationship as well so for example when you say like very often we got we got told to do this piece of analysis in a valuation way the next question would definitely be uh, what is the implication on the capital side of the thing and right. stuff like that like so being in a uh, a management role, you could definitely have the exposure to cover more aspects and actually do a peer review between different functions. And you can learn, you, you do learn a lot like from that process itself. Um, so that is the first one. Uh, the second one is actually, I, I personally enjoy a lot is, is to have the opportunity to uplift and promote your team members. Um, I personally, I'm not a good talker obviously, but uh, I, I feel that like sometimes when I bring along the the team member who actually does that piece of technical work and into the conversation, I can uh, we we can I generally I could manage the conversation upward much better because I have enough detail. I always have enough details. I always have the help mm -hmm. from the team member who did the work and actually help me to fill in some of the gaps that I might not have mm. the exact details. Uh, so, and also on the other hand, it also gives them the opportunity to sh showcase their excellence in front of the more senior stakeholders. Mm. Uh, so that is really one thing that I personally enjoy a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a win-win situation because mm. you don't have to be across all the detail. You can bring the team member who's done the work and they've got all the detail if they need, if you need to draw on that. But mm. also it gives them an opportunity to raise their profile and contribute Correct. and also see where their work is going too. Correct. The, and they the... deserve it. And I have to say that they yeah. deserve it. I don't necessarily, as a, as a team leader, I it's just my style. I don't feel that like I always own the entire piece of the work. Mm. I, often I would be the face of the work, mm. but I don't actually, and we know that it, I know that's deep in my heart. I don't own the whole entire piece. Mm. I have to make sure that like the team members also get exposed to the level that they deserve to be. And a lot of them are actually quite keen to get the exposure. Mm. And that's like, I'm hoping that's also in the future, like we doing it this way, we could maintain really good working relationship because I know that at some stage, some of these talents like in the team, they could well be my manager in one day, in the yeah. future, who knows? Yeah. So I guess, yeah, it's a really good way to actually lift each other up yeah, as I actually promote them. Yeah, sounds like you have a very healthy mindset around management and what that role looks like. Uh, while also being able to get things done, but in being able to leverage the skills and the work that the team is doing and also giving them the credit for the work that they're doing too. So everyone is is learning and developing and mm. um, getting the credit for the work that they're doing. So excellent. Mm. Mm. And it also seems like that then lets you step out to be able to look at some of that big bigger picture type uh, thinking and to see, okay, well, here's what the team's doing, but here's how it fits in with the business more broadly. So without you being tangled down in the details of all of the technical work, you're able to to see where, you know, see how that fits in in the bigger picture as well, which is very powerful. Mm. Okay, so that's what you've in, what you enjoy about working as a, a mm. team leader. What's mm. something you found challenging about working as a team leader? Yeah. Uh... I just mentioned that that's like it's a transition from being so close to the details, and mm -hmm. uh, I think that aspect is something for new managers to really um, be be careful of. Like, um, mm -hmm. there would definitely be, be a transition that like you you need to uh, be less close to the details and give people the opportunity to refine and take out the details for you. And in doing that process, it can be frustrating because you know that like you have done similar things before. You know that if you are actually the doer, you could definitely get it right in mm. one go. Mm. Uh, much quicker at least. Much quicker. But not necessarily the case that when you actually have your team member to look after that. And often in the situation that's like it doesn't things don't fall out the way you think it should be. Mm. Like you start becoming impatient. You know, sometimes you can even become a little bit emotional to 
to to the, your team member and that is one of the common mistakes that i've seen and including myself i made the same mistake before that like you're not lenient enough to your team member because mm -hmm. there can be many reasons why they don't deliver to the same standards that you decide to, mm -hmm. to have because maybe because they don't know the enough background they don't actually know what the context is they don't mm -hmm. Also, very often also they don't necessarily have the right skills and it's your responsibility to uplift that skill mm. to get them to get to the level that's like you hope for, you hope that one day you can become one of you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i guess that is one thing that i uh, one of the common mistakes that i've seen is definitely that like um you we like once relationship is actually very hard to save once it's damaged mm, that's true. with your team members you definitely want to maintain a good relationship uh and it is uh important that because you know that you and the team member are actually on the same boat like mm. if he or she performs you will perform and that's if right. they don't perform perform you will end up having a lot of um workload additional workload on yourself and you mm. don't want that and that is not that is not the responsibility of a team leader as well. It's in mm. like your your role is to manage the work and not actually mm. doing the work. If you actually end up doing the work, you're not actually managing the work. So I guess that is the one aspect that uh, people do. Uh, new managers definitely want to keep in mind, and it's that's like you always want to maintain a good relationship with your team members, and that is the first thing. Mm. Second thing thing is more about managing upward is that like you will get as you get more exposures to different like um elements in the um uh in the uh, in the organization you will often be in a situation that like you just get an order and then just try to do something but without actually questioning why you are doing that mm -hmm. so you always want to be uh you almost always want to be part of the thinking process like reach out to people understanding why your your team is being engaged to do this piece of work and mm -hmm. where does it actually flow through and so that you can contribute to the process uh in a way that first you set the right expectation what can be delivered what cannot be live be delivered with this time frame or with this level of resources but second also influence the how the solution itself sh should actually be crafted in the first place because like you doing it that way like you could potentially like um uh have a more refined way approach to to um to tackle the problem rather than because like some of your senior stakeholders they may not actually know the exact details and by doing this you're illustrating that you're adding value to the process and that is one thing that i would definitely recommend like be like your role is no longer just to do the work but actually managing the conversation mm. as well uh so that those would be the key two tips from the more like technical manager role expects like um yeah that i would yeah. like to give to the new managers yeah yeah, yeah. excellent um so <clears throat> so if you had one tip for actuaries stepping into management roles what would it be mm, i think i've given two already uh, yep. but if you're asking me for more general advice i actually would say like be in the office and connect like um i think COVID has really speeded up the involvement of flexible working a lot and i personally benefit a lot from it i have a two-year-old daughter i have a pet i am expecting a second kid indeed i don't even know how in the past people managed to, to do all the drop off and pick up uh like while they are being required to go 100% into the office. On the flip side, working from home is also stopping a lot of the random conversation between people. And mm -hmm. being a manager is really like about like being the bridge between people. In, uh, so I, I would say that um, um, actually, especially for actuaries because actuaries are very disciplined like I, across the like this the general observation but we also come often very very often come with introvert type type of biases we don't talk to people enough mm -hmm. and so in order for you to um to showcase like uh, that your desire your your that you to your stakeholders that you actually want to work more and work better it's actually never been easier to 
by just going into the office, showing your face, having a conversation with your leaders um, to, to build that relationship. And often like, very often what you I find is also that uh, sometimes an opportunity falls into you simply because you are there, not necessarily because you have the, you, 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 you have the, uh, ideal skill set mm, but so just I because think, you're there and they see you yeah correct correct so i still building that momentum up like i started with like one day a week like about a year ago and now i'm ramping up to perhaps two to three days a week okay. uh, to be in the office just to have a conversation with other people and, and you just don't know what you like what you get out of it like uh but it's a good effort i, I think it's an effort that i would like to continue to invest mm, yeah mm. Mm. nothing beats that face-to-face -face contact even mm. even with the technology that we have at our fingertips these days it's not quite the same is it so, that's correct yeah yeah so some great advice there alex you've talked about the importance of uh being calm and as good leaders being calm and projecting a calmness even when things are a bit uncertain You've talked about the benefits of being a manager in terms of being able to bring the bigger picture and see the bigger picture as well when you're not doing the technical work. You've talked about how you like to bring your team members along for those conversations, which is win-win for them and for you because they have the details at hand and also they have an opportunity to showcase what they've done with more senior team members too. And you've also talked about uh, the... I loved your quote in there around... Um, if you're doing, as a, as a manager, your job is to manage the work. Uh, and if you're doing the work, then you're not doing your job. You're managing, you're not managing, you're doing. Uh, I think that's a really important mindset to have as we step into that managerial role, because it can be such a, a new, a new way of working, a new way of showing up. Um, and some great tips around, uh, building your presence and, and being in the office and some of the benefits of being there in person. So Alex, thank you so much for your time today. I'm sure those tips will be very helpful for the other actuaries who are listening today. And it's been a, an absolute pleasure to have this conversation with you on We Are Actuaries today. Thank you. Same here. Thank you, Julia.